you people here in the auditorium turn to Acts chapter 1. Thank you, Rhoda, and thank you, Dorothy. We're playing the piano and organ so beautifully all weekend. You've had a lot of practice, haven't you? Wonderful. You're the best. Acts chapter 1 tonight. Today is the day which is the birthday of the church. The church was born on Pentecost because this is when men and women were first born again of God's Spirit. This, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the Word of God is concerned, is the greatest day in the church year. As far as the world is concerned, they make the greatest day Christmas. Christmas is the greatest day in the worldly viewpoint because Christmas has become so commercialized. It's a good time to sell stuff. And then, of course, perhaps the second greatest day is Easter. But when it comes to Pentecost, we very seldom do much with it. Or when we do something with it, we let out some of the most important things the Word of God talks about. You know, if the day of Pentecost started the church, and as far as I know, all the major Protestant denominations and Roman Catholic, all of them say that the church was inaugurated, it was started on the day of Pentecost. Then, if it started on the day of Pentecost, and you and I belong to that church, which was started at Pentecost, then certainly it behooves us to do what they did on the day of Pentecost, just by sheer logic. But this record in the book of Acts to bring us to the day of Pentecost began some time before, and this is where I want to begin tonight. I want to again set clearly before you some things many of you know. Others, it will be perhaps new, or it will be a review that will benefit you greatly. Remembering this, that Jesus Christ was dead and buried for three days and three nights. And I got so blessed last night as the teen choir from Columbus Bible Way Church at the, at, at the rally sang, Amen. They sang that song, and for once in my life I heard something that was accurate. They sang about Jesus Christ being crucified on Wednesday and being raised on Saturday. Did you know that? Well, it took a way grad to write the song. Reverend Mrs. Johnson wrote the song, wrote the words. But it blessed my heart. Well, anyways, God got him up. By the power of God, Jesus Christ was raised. And then 40 days after the resurrection, is a day which is called in the Bible what? The Ascension. When Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Ten days after the Ascension is the day of Pentecost. So from the time of the resurrection of Jesus to the day of Pentecost, you have a total of 50 days. Now Acts chapter 1 Verse 1 says something which all of us should be real cognizant of, namely this, the former treaties. Well, what is the former treaties? The former treaties is the Gospel of Luke, which was also written by this person who wrote the book of Acts, the Gospel of Luke. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. The word Theophilus means beloved of God. The, the, the former treaties is made to the beloved of God of all that Jesus began both to do and what? Teach until the day he was taken up. What day is that? The ascension. Then the gospel of Luke must terminate with the truth of the what? The ascension. All the gospels do, by the way. None of the gospel stories go beyond the ascension. But here we're specifically reading about the gospel of Luke, that it had about Jesus, what Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day he was taken up. So, that day is the day of the ascension. 
after that, he, through, or by way of, the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles, unto the apostles whom he had what? Chosen. So before he ascended up, he gave a commandment. He gave a commandment. He told the apostles whom he had chosen what he wanted them to do. The thing he told them is recorded in verse 4. Commanded them that they should not what? Depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. This was the command that he gave to the apostles whom he had what? Chosen. That's remarkable. You know, if you'll keep your finger here and go to the Gospel of Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the last chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of what? Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. Now, if you'll remember what we just read in Acts, he was with them, he told them that the Gospel of Luke dealt with everything that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was what? Taken up. After he had given commandment unto the apostles that they were not to depart from where? Jerusalem. Now, over here you have the same truth in the Gospel of Luke that just corroborates what I've read to you from the book of Acts. He told them to tarry in the city of what? Jerusalem. To tarry in the city of Jerusalem is to wait in the city of Jerusalem that Acts talked about. And they were to wait until they were endued with power from on high. Verse 50, And he led them out as far as what? He lifted up his hands and blessed them, and it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into what? Heaven, which is the ascension. Which is the ascension. You got it? That's exactly what he had told us in Acts 1, verse 1, following. And it says in verse 52, they worshipped him, returned to Jerusalem with great what? Joy. Now, in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 6, Remembering now that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had what? Chosen. This is what he told the apostles whom he chose. They were to go back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. In Luke chapter 6, verse 13, it says this, And when it was day, he, Jesus, called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve whom also he named apostles. A disciple is a follower. One who followed the Lord Jesus Christ. An apostle is one who is sent. The word apostle means to be sent. You can have a disciple without being an apostle, but you cannot have a what? an apostle without he being a disciple, believer, a follower. An apostle is one who was sent. These twelve were disciples, but he sent them forth as apostles. They were to minister the word. They were to carry the word. I told you once and many times in the classes that an apostle is one who is sent to carry new light to his generation. It may be old light, but it's new to the generation to whom he speaks. Now he called unto him these twelve, whom also he named, what? Apostles. 
Verse 14. Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, called the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called Salotus, verse 16, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas, what? Iscariot. There are two Judases in the twelve apostles whom he called. One was Judas, who was a brother of James. The other man's name was Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot came from the southern part of Judea. He came from a city called Iscar. That's what the word Iscariot means. It would be like saying, Victor New Knoxville. They'd hate that. Uh, that I came from New Knoxville. Or it would say, John, well, what town do you want to be from? St. Mary's. John St. Mary's would mean that it was John who came from St. Mary's. Judas came from Iscar. This is why he is called Judas Iscariot. And he was the only Judean among all the twelve apostles. All the other eleven were all Galileans. This becomes very important in a knowledge accurately of the first chapter of the book of Acts. Well, the apostles whom he had chosen, how many did he choose? Twelve. Go back to Acts 1. Given commandment unto the apostles, verse 2, tail end of it, whom he had what? How many did he choose? What day is this he's talking to them? The day of what? The ascension, 40 days after the resurrection. Who are present on that day when he's talking to them? The apostles whom he has what? How many did he choose? Who were, how many were there? Then Judas must have been there. Right? Sure, it's right. The only thing this does is hurt your theology. That's all. You know why? Because we have been taught erroneously that when Judas Iscariot betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, because there's a record in John that says, and Judas went out and did what? Hanged himself. And so we have put some wonderful words in that. We have said, and Judas went out and immediately, right after he betrayed him, hanged himself. It doesn't say that. It just says Judas went out and what? You've got to go to the word over here to find out when he did it. When he did it. He couldn't have done it here. He couldn't have done it before and still be here. Unless he'd have been at a meeting like I was attending last week. That's the only way he could do her. That's impossible. Because the Word of God says when a person dies, he's dead and stays dead until Christ comes back and gets him up. We've just been through a number of weeks of that, haven't we? The accuracy of it. Now, people, they can all say what they want to say. But this is what the Word says and this is what it means. Now, this doesn't hurt me. This thrills me. You know why it thrills me? All I have to give up is my wrong teaching. And I can just build myself on the word, and then I can go out and I can say, Thus, this I can teach to young people. College students that listen to this logic, they're not going to listen to anybody when they hash it up like we have through the centuries. I don't care how sincere we are. Because once in a while they sit down and think. And when they think, it doesn't fit. This fits. You know why? Because, starting with verse 15 of this first chapter, in those days, I mean the first chapter of Acts, verse 15, in those days when they were tearing and waiting for the promise, which you and I know had to be sometime between the what? The ascension and the day of what? A period of how many days? Ten days. Sometime in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. Is it the day of Pentecost? No, it's in those days between the ascension and the day of Pentecost. Peter stood up in the midst, and the names together at that time were about what? Were there 120? 
Nope, it was about 120. Was it the day of Pentecost? No, everybody knows that if you can read. 